The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polena Lobalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Hello students. I'm Victor Juru, your biology teacher. Welcome to this learning session. The lesson of today is on evolution, the last in the biotechnology and evolution model in opposite science. We shall begin the lesson with speciation, theories of evolution, evidence of organic evolution, patterns of descent. Before we begin the lesson, correction of the assignment. In the last lesson, the assignment was given. What accounts for the variety observed in living organisms of the same species? Answer. Segregation of gametes. We saw that in reproduction. Crossing over during meiosis. That was also seen in cytology in lower sea. The environment, we studied this in environmental biology, mutation of genes, and many others. As you look at these factors, they are factors that naturally cause variation in populations of living organisms. In the former modules that we handled, we were looking at artificial factors, how humans manipulate the genes of living organisms so that the organisms become different from each other. So in this last lesson, we are looking now at the natural things that occur that cause variation in population of living organisms. Speciation. The word speciation is formed from species. Species is a group of living organisms that look alike and can interbreed to produce a fertile offspring. If you look at the human race, an African can interbreed with a European to produce an offspring capable of producing another. So all of us belong to one species. Species is the lowest taxonomic, taxonomic rank. Speciation, therefore, is the evolutionary formation of new biological species by one species. Speciation is the evolutionary formation of new biological species by one species. Mechanisms of speciation. Speciation can occur in three major mechanisms. Allopatric, sympatric, and gradual change or intraspecific mechanisms. Allopatric mechanism. It occurs when a barrier, such as a stretch of sea or mountain range, separates different populations of a particular species. Remember, in our study of environmental biology, 
we defined population as a group of organisms of the same species living and interacting together. So in our study of speciation and evolution, the population is a very important factor. Prolonged separation results to genetic separation and formation of new species. Sympatric mechanisms. In this mechanism, new species are formed by isolation triggered by differences in habitat, reproduction, or heredity. For example, similar plants may fail to breed together because their flowering seasons are different. In our study of coordination, we studied how the flowering of plants is regulated by the length of the day. And in that, in that uh, thermoperiodism, we saw that some plants require a specific day length before the flower. Now, if in a group of plants, most of them flower at a particular month, the, flower, the plant that does not flower at that month may find it difficult to cross-breed with the other plants that are flowering at that time. Some birds are stimulated to breed only after witnessing a song, display, or courtship ritual characteristic in their group. Reduced gene flow can now cause organisms not to be able to mate anymore. Gradual change or intraspecific mechanism. In this mechanism, new species arise through slow modification of a single group of organisms into an entirely new group. If we look at the picture explaining allopatric speciation, the initial step of speciation is a barrier that separates the two groups of organisms. And when they separate for too long, gene flow between the two of them reduces all to an extent where even if they reunite again together, they find it difficult to continue interbreeding. And at that level, two species have been formed. In sympatric speciation, the initial step of speciation is genetic polymorphism, where reproductive isolation comes into place. Females of a particular species may choose to mate only with males with certain particular characteristics. If that continues for too long, gene flow between the various phenotypes within the population will reduce up to an extent where it will become difficult for the males of a particular color or plumage to mate with the females that are available. And to that extent, two species must have evolved. This process is very important in evolution. And the third, which is gradual change, occurs within the same group of organisms around the same area. The initial step of speciation is a change in the niche. One of the organisms may move out of the niche and go into another niche. Prolonged separation with the members of the other niche can cause separation of gene. When gene flow does not occur between them, mutation may occur within these organisms, and even when they come back together, it will be, it will be impossible for them to mate and produce fertile offspring. And these two, in gradual change, it can be peripatric or parapatric. Parapatric is when it just extends to a new, to a new niche, very close to the present niche. In environmental biology, we also study that a niche is the role and the functions that the organism play within that uh, environment. Now, if the role that the organism is playing changes, the organism may start developing some other characteristics to adapt it to that new change of function. And when that, those type of adaptations continue for too long, it may cause a mutation in their genes. And that genes that are mutated are transferred to the offspring and they keep on producing offspring now that are different from the other. Selection and polygenic inheritance. Selection is a process by which organisms that adapt well to their environment produce offspring, while those that do not adapt 
die, resulting to gradual changes in a species. Types of selection. Stabilizing selection. This is a type of selection where there is selection against the extremes of the range of organisms. Stabilizing selection occurs in the flowering period of plants. When plants flower at different periods, normally the range at which plants flower, a majority of the plants will flower at a particular period. A few of them will flower before the period or after the period. So if selection is ensuring that only flowers, plants that flower at a specific period within the average range are selected and undergo pollination and produce more, that type of selection will fall in the middle and we'll call it stabilizing selection. Stabilizing selection is also common in human infant mortality rates. Optimum body mass at birth is 3.6 kilograms. Babies who are heavier or lighter than this show increased mortality. And if the curve is taken, lighter babies and heavier babies show higher rates of infant mortality, while babies whose weight are around the 3.6 kilogram range survive more. And that type of selection is called stabilizing selection. Disruptive selection. This is a type of selection which occurs against intermediate phenotypes in favor of the extremes. This type of selection is very common with the salmons based on body size. The salmons are fish that live in the sea and breed in the nearby rivers. Now, in this species, larger males, which are of this direction, the larger males have big size and they fight and compete a lot during mating. And that competition is very high because the salmons breed once in their entire life cycle. So during the breeding time, there is a lot of competition. The bigger males fight and kick off all the average size males and they find it difficult to come around the females to mate or fertilize their eggs. Now in this species, there are some males that have very small sizes. These males can enter into small rock around the riverbeds. And some females, when they lay the eggs in water, the eggs are carried and deposited within the rock. So those smaller males that can enter into the rock, they have chances of going there and meeting eggs and fertilizing it. The bigger males outcompete the average males and they, they continue growing and reproducing. That type of selection now disfavors the intermediary and you see that the selection is moving to the extremes. We call it disruptive selection, which is a very important process in evolution. Directional selection. This is a type of selection that results to change in phenotype in one particular direction. For example, faster predators are more likely to be successful in killing prey, while on the other hand, Faster preys are more likely to evade capture. To that effect, selection acts in the direction of increased speed. If you look at our curve, you realize that the normal distribution of the organism shifts to the direction of speed. If on this scale, we put speed against number of organisms. Since predators that can run very fast have the higher ability of feeding well, growing to maturity, prey that can run very fast, have higher chances of evading capture, so they can grow to reproductive age and leave offspring. Those that are slow will likely be killed and eaten before reproduction and will not leave any offspring. As a result, selection is going towards a direction. And after a period of time, you discover that all the prey or all the predators are so fast moving from slow pre-existing organisms. Now, evolution. Evolution is a process by which all species develop from earlier forms of life. The four principles of evolution are variation, inheritance, selection, and time. Variation, is genetic mat variation in genetic material favors reproduction, 
by some individuals more than others leading to evolution. Before we see how the organisms are evolving, where do they start? There are so many theories that try to handle the origin of life on Earth. The first and most common is the theory of divine creation by God. This theory holds that a supernatural being called God created all of life at a specific time. Theory of spontaneous generation. This theory holds that living things came from non-living matter. The theory has highly been criticized because of biogenesis. The theory of panspermia holds that life has a cosmosome origin, that life originated from space and came to Earth. The biochemical evolution theory by chemical and physical laws, that life came on Earth by natural chemical and physical laws, that chemical substances reacted in an archaeous, cold environment, produced membranes, and started life. Then it evolved to the present situation that we have. And lastly, we have the steady-state theory, which holds that life has no origin. Theories of evolution. The first theory that was advanced to explain evolution was Lamarck's theory. Lamarck based his experience on changing environment, where he said ev evolutionary, change, evolutionary changes result from environmental influences. Used organs enlarge and become more efficient, while unused ones degenerate and become useless. New species are formed from the inheritance of acquired characters developed by use and disuse. This theory was disputed. But when scientists came to the fact that when a human being becomes blind, the ears and the nostrils increase their capacities in such a way that the person starts getting the sound of people's feet, the way they, the way they put their steps, get the number of steps he has on the floor and identifies it to the person. When the person gets blind, he gets the smell of everything. He can sit in a room and tell you what is happening outside from the smell you get. But the person who sees does not get that. And that was explained by use and disuse. Parts of the body that are used excessively develop. The parts that are not used, like the appendix, they degenerate and they become vestigial. For example, the spreading of toes by aquatic birds led to the development and inheritance of wet toes for easy swimming. Stretching to harvest vegetation by short necked giraffes led to the development and inheritance of long necks. That is why this theory is described as the theory of use and disuse. As we see on the picture, when vegetation was lost on the floor and the giraffe has to eat, have to eat on trees, they started stretching their neck. As they are stretching to obtain vegetation, that ability of stretching repeatedly caused a mutation in their gene. And due to this mutation, the offspring that they were producing had long necks. Any offspring that did not inherit long necks had it difficult to eat and did not grow to the productive age and died. And that theory was known as Lamarck's theory. Darwin Wallace theory. The theory states that all species of organisms arise and develop through natural selection of inherited variations that increase the ability to compete, survive, and reproduce. Individuals struggle to survive. Only the strongest do survive. Survival of the fittest. If you look at in a natural population, yes, John, I know you have five of you in your house. Your mother delivered five children. But the population of the earth has not increased by five. The reason is that during reproduction, animals produce many offspring. But the population of the earth does not keep on increasing at that rate at which children are being born. To that effect, natural selection comes into place. The fittest survive and the population stay constant. 
This theory is also identified as the theory of survival of the fittest by natural selection. Darwin postulated that man started as an ape. After evolutionary changes, use of hands developed, and as the man came up and started walking up and not putting the four limbs on the ground, the length of the hand started going upwards and becoming a little short, as you can see from the two pictures. Later on, man started producing tools that were used. As the tools were used to crack knots that used to be cracked with the teeth, the skeleton started changing. The jaw bones started becoming soft. More tools were developed. Fire was developed. Weapons were developed. Later on, clothing was developed. And the man we know now sits on the computer and does everything. Modern theories of evolution. This theory holds that variation within species caused by the environment are not inheritable, as Lamarck postulated, but that a combination of Darwin's ideas and genetics is called modern evolutionary synthesis. In this case, we take the, the change of gene due to the environment, will not just be inherited and transferred to the next generation, but it is going to cause a mutation in the gene, and that gene will be transferred to the next organism, and the organism has evolved. Irritable characteristics are caused by changes of DNA in the chromosome by mutation. We saw that in the last modules, that if you modify, if you modify the gene of an organism, it will change and start producing substances it was not producing. The functional unit of evolution is the population, while isolation is an important factor in the evolutionary process. We saw isolation in speciation, evidence of organic evolution, fossil evidence. A fossil is any trace of a plant or animal of past geologic ages preserved in rock strata. Fossils of an era provide evidence of the types of species that existed as seen in imprints or entire preserved organisms. The study of fossils is called paleontology, and paleontologists calculate the ages of fossils by carbon dating. On the slide, we see an imprint of an animal, which is a fossil, and molds of organism trapped in rock strata, which can be obtained, and their ages calculated by carbon dating. The use of fossils in evolutionary studies is highly criticized because the fossil study has links in its records. What are the factors responsible for the missing links in fossil records? One, soft-bodied organisms such as worms do not fossilize and most are eliminated by saprophytes and scavengers. Natural catastrophic events are rare and there are periods of non-deposition. Fossils are lost through erosion, weathering, and volcanicity. So a particular era, may, the data of a particular era may be absent in the record. Some fossils are undiscovered. Some new species appear suddenly with no intermediate, particularly species that are formed by sudden mutation. Fossil remains of any man are comparatively rare because their population was very small. They did not live in places where fossilization easily occurred and their remains were destroyed by wild animals since they were living in very close proximity with the wild animals. Fossils of aquatic animals are more abundant in the Earth's crust than terrestrial animals. The next evidence is comparative anatomy. The pentadactyl limb in most vertebrates is similar. This similarity shows descent from a common ancestor. If you look at the diagram, the pentadactyl limb of a human, a cat, whale, and bat. These are organisms that have nothing in resemblance when you look at them from the physical outside. But if you go to their anatomy, the bone, they all have all these structures, 
of the bone present in them. Meaning, all of these organisms called mammals are all descendants of a common ancestor. Comparative biochemistry. The presence of similar biochemical molecules in a range of animals show a common ancestral origin. Remember, in biomolecules, we said that all living organisms have the same 20 amino acids and the same five nitrogenous base, be it bacteria, fungi, plants, animal, meaning there is a descent from a common ancestor. Some, phys some physiological reactions are similar in different species, showing common descent from ancestral forms. Take the respiration reaction, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, the same thing occurs in a cat, occurs in humans, occurs in a rat, occurs in a mosquito. It shows descent from a common ancestor. Geographical isolation. Natural events such as volcanic eruptions can separate organisms. Once they are separated, the development of adaptive traits result in evolution. If you consider an ancestral population of rabbits, if they are together and a river or water body separates them, geographical isolation comes into play. When they are separated for long, mutation and natural selection would occur. Once mutation occurs, it means that there is no gene flow again between these organisms and these since the rabbits cannot cross the water. Reproductive isolation takes place. And after a period of time, even if these organisms come back together, they will be so different in their genetic content that they will not be able to interbreed again and they have formed two species. Classification. Look at all of these organisms on the slide. All of them, they are collectively called insects. It means humans, by natural instinct, know that even, organ even though organisms are looking so different, they have grouped all of them and classified them as insects. Organisms looking different are grouped by similarity of structures. All the insects there have three pairs of jointed legs one or two pairs of wings, a pair of antenna, body divided into three segments. It shows descent from a common ancestor. And this type of classification is called phylogenetic classification. The differences between close members suggest an evolutionary process. Plant and animal breeding. Selection by man during cultivation and rearing in selective breeding, which we saw in traditional biotechnology could be an evidence of evolution. Pre-existing species had different characteristics, structures, and potentials from present species. The plums, mangoes, apples we eat now are very different from the plums, mangoes, and apples that were eaten in this same area 50 years back. The next evidence is comparative embryology. If you look at the picture on the slide, the embryo of fish, bird, reptile, and human appear the same at one stage of their development. This shows descent from a common ancestor. In plants, the organization of angiosperm embryo is basically similar. One or two cotyledons and embryonic shoots or roots meaning they all come from a common parent. Adaptive radiation. The members of a species disperse to take advantage of different habitats and niches. On doing that, specialization to obtain food results in dissimilarity between organisms of the same species. The organisms may evolve rapidly into a number of species, each adapted to one of the available niches. Patterns of descent. Descent describes ancestral background or connection to an ancestor or group of ancestors. The pattern can be divided into divergent, convergent, or co-evolution. 
in divergent evolution, two segments of a population diverge, and each group follows an independent evolutionary change, e.g. the mouth path of insects having analogous structures where all the parts are looking so different but they are carrying out the same function. Convergent evolution. Distantly related species in the same niche evolve in ways that make them appear more closely related. The organisms develop homologous structures having similar embryonic origins the different functions such as wings, fins and legs of mammals, all used in locomotion or displacement. Co-evolution is the pattern where the two organisms evolve in response to each other. Co-evolution is often apparent in flowers and their pollinators. If you look at a hummingbird, it, it evolves a long slender beak and at the same time the flowers that it pollinates also evolve to produce a tube-shaped Petal, so that the, bee, the, the bird easily gains access to collect nectar, thereby pollinating the plants. In a summary, divergent evolution is when two species separate in the evolutionary line. Convergent evolution, different species meet and start resembling each other in the evolutionary line, while in co-evolution, Two species evolve parallel to each other. Common misconceptions in evolution. One, people often misconstrue the, the phrase survival of the fittest. It does not mean that the strongest organism outcompetes weaker organisms. It just means that organisms that fit themselves into life and develop a way of surviving, whether strong or weak, big or small, as we saw in the salmons, can survive. Organisms change their characteristics in direct response to the environment. It's a misconception. In modern evolution, characteristics are not transferred in response to the environment. The environment causes mutation in the gene, and that mutation alters the characteristic which will not be transferred to the offspring. Evolution always progresses to better creatures is a misconception. There are some evolutions that move to structures which are instead eliminated. So evolution is not a concept of moving from less successful way of life to a more successful life. It is a chance event that occurs to all living organisms. Natural selection. It is a process whereby organisms that are better adapted to the environment survive and produce more offspring. The process was established by Darwin and Wallace, where they explained that variation is the main ingredient that combines with differential reproduction and heredity to bring natural selection. And when natural selection is there, evolution occurs. Now, consider a population of beetles. Some green in color and others yellow in color due to variation. Birds have the ability to easily detect green beetles. The green beetles are eating. Green beetles do not have the chance of growing to the reproductive age. They leave less offspring. The yellow beetles reach reproductive age and leave more offspring. Selection favors yellow beetles. Beetles which are yellow leave more offspring and at a level at one time all the beetles who have yellow colors. Evaluation. List the theories of evolution. List the theories of evolution. Two. Explain why fossils of aquatic organisms are more abundant on land than those of terrestrial organisms. Explain why fossils of aquatic organisms are more abundant on land than those of terrestrial organisms. Answers. The theories of evolution are those of Lamarck, 
Darwin Wallace, and the modern theory. Fossils of aquatic organisms are more common on land than those of terrestrial organisms because aquatic organisms are more numerous. Rapid sedimentation occurs at estuaries and beaches that favors fossilization of aquatic organisms. Water covers a greater area of the earth than the crust. Assignment. Define growth. Two, explain two reasons why organisms grow. Explain two reasons why organisms grow. To enable you to do the assignment, consult your main text, Biological Science 1 and 2 by Taylor et al. And for further reading, consult the text on the slide. We have come to the end of this lesson. The next module will be on growth and development.